こんにちは日本青年会議所沖縄地区協議会会長のプチベです本日の司会を務めさせていただきますまた本日のアシスタントで伊藤貴信君にもご参加をいただいてます伊藤君よろしくお願いします本日のテーマ「オードリー・タン流デジタルは自由のために沖縄新時代への道を開け」新型コロナウイルスにより多大な影響を受けた沖縄県経済その経済の再生に向けてデジタルというキーワードをもとに本日はオードリー・タンさんからたくさんのご教授をいただきたいと思っております台湾と沖縄は地理的優位性を含め文化的にも非常に似通ったところがありますそういったところも雑談を踏まえてですね楽しんで聞いていきたいというふうに思いますそれでは本日よろしくお願いしますそれではここでオードリー・タンさんの紹介をします台湾のデジタル担当大臣であります1981年4月18日生まれということで私たちと同世代ということですねなんと生後8か月の時には言語をしゃべり出したという逸話も残っております8歳の時にプログラミングを独学で学び始め14歳でインターネットと出会い中学を中退その後アメリカの方へ東大に19歳でシリコンバレーでソフトウェア会社を起業24歳アメリカアップルや台湾の企業の顧問を歴に35歳で台湾最年少かつトランスジェンダーで世界初の閣僚を一緒に37歳ではアメリカ外交政策専門誌「ポーリン・ポリシー」で世界の図の100人に選出されるともうすごい経歴ですね鳥肌が立ちそうです鳥肌が立つような本当にお方で今日はそういう方が出演をされるということで楽しみですね楽しみですそれではオードリー・ターさんの出演まであともう少し楽しみにお待ちしたいと思います。皆さん、候補期。そうそうですね。お、あ、はい、えー、皆さん、えー、踊りさん来られました。拍手でお迎えください。Hello everyone。Hi、踊りさん。Thank you very much for joining with us, and it's a big honor to have you at our discussions. I would be much appreciated if you could give us your opinions how digital or technology through different channel will help improve our society. An economy that affected by COVID 19. Definitely.、Uh, and my first message、uh, is of course, wear your mask to protect <laughs> against unwashed hands, wash with soap. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so Audrey san, have you been to Okinawa before? Or yes. Or what kind、uh, of impression do you have about Okinawa? It's the first time that I drive a car、uh, with no the sound end of engines. Uh, and I also、uh, have a recharging station uh, experience uh, called、uh, Ch uh, Chai Demo or something like that、uh, at a uh, charging uh, that is very quick. So I can just tour around the entire island without worrying about refueling.、Uh, and it feels very green and very uh, electric. Uh, it's like the future. Audrey san, so I would like to move on to the questions. So, according to the latest report, more than 900,000 people,、um, Taiwanese, visit Okinawa every year, which is almost half of them visiting mainland. Okinawa has always been a favorite spot for,、um, favorite destination for Taiwanese tourists, not only because of the physical distance, but also the cultural distance、um, connection attracts their tourists. So, let me ask you how digital can help boost tourism. As we share the same similarities, what step do you think that we should Take to prevent the spread of COVID 19 with the goal to reopen our borders at the same time? For example,、mm -hmm. what measures should we take at the airports for incoming passengers?、Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good、uh, question.、Um, in Taiwan,、uh, we are insisting on 14 days quarantine, but we are massively improving the life quality for the people in that 14 day quarantine. We have some of the best hotels. Joining as quarantine hotels.、Um, some of them are located just above、uh, maybe a, a very good view、uh, of the sea or a very good view of the night market. 
so that people can uh, still feel that they are part uh, of the society. And if they have a food they want from the night market, uh, the hotel people bring it to them so they can enjoy it uh, while uh, enjoying uh, in the natural scenery or in the street uh, scenery. I remember when I visited Okinawa, I was in a large uh, resort hotel and there was a typhoon at that time. So uh, unexpectedly, so I couldn't go anywhere uh, but to watch Typhoon. Uh, but it is also uh, very pleasant <laughs> to be kind of one uh, with nature, even though I'm de facto quarantined <laughs> for, for the couple of days. Uh, and so some way of improving the life quality so that people can still feel like they are touring with the help of VR, of extended reality and so on, maybe practical and we are already doing some of that for the people who choose higher end quarantine hotels in Taiwan. Thank you. So Taiwan and Okinawa are currently, currently limiting inbound tourists into our ter um, territories. What procedures or how we should form an alliance to make this happen in the near future? Mm -hmm. Yeah, as I mentioned, of course, uh, the quarantining procedures, you can make it still fun uh, to spend uh, the 14 days in quarantine uh, and make it a limited uh, tourism package. That's one way of thinking about it. Uh, the other way of thinking about it is that uh, just like we are having a video conference right now, uh, we are seeing each other in two dimensions. But nowadays, like in Taiwan, I use very regularly uh, a device called XR space. And XR, uh, unlike the previous generation of virtual reality, it doesn't need a controller, it doesn't need uh, any monitoring device, it doesn't need a PC, it doesn't even need a Wi-Fi connection because it has 5G chip built in. So anywhere, uh, even in the mountains, near the sea, near the uh, the, the blue uh, diving uh, spot, uh, well, maybe not underwater, uh, but on the boat at least, um, you can wear such a device and transport yourself to other places. Like I was just uh, traveling uh, with some artists in New York City uh, together uh, to the uh, Switzerland uh, in a very high mountain, and it's like we went on the helicopter trip uh, on that mountain together. I'm sure the same can be uh, done for diving experiences as well, especially for people with health issues. They couldn't dive very deeply anyway, uh, and uh, virtual reality diving may be the, the best way for them to experience diving without risking their health and so on. Uh, and Taiwan have also developed uh, virtual reality capture devices even for very deep underwater like the boat, uh, the ships that was on the bottom of the sea, but that's part of our history too. Uh, so we sent robots, like the director of uh, Titanic, right, uh, Cameron, uh, sent robots to explore this sunk ship uh, and design an experience around it. That's all the things that we can do as part of the Taiwan Digital Asset Library. And we're happy to also work with Okinawa if you want to offer something like that so that people can uh, basically tour the most important cultural attractions before we develop a biological vaccine. And once the vaccine is ready for the tourists, they will go to precisely that location because they already know uh, what's it like to be there. Okay, thank you. So the next question is, I heard that Taiwan ha has managed to boost up the domestic travel demand while the tourism industry has been hit hard by the COVID-19. So please tell us your um, any strategies of domestic you know travel and the reacceptance of foreign tourists in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of people who used to travel to Okinawa Island uh, now travel to the Penghu Island or the Pescadores uh, because they are uh, the Pescadores. Of course, is part of uh, our country, <laughs> uh, and so because of that, uh, we are seeing. Uh, more than what it could take uh, from the mainland Taiwan travelers uh, because everybody goes there. Uh, and um, there are some very creative ways uh, around the restriction of travel. For example, people will go to an airplane and go through this whole motion of uh, you know, checking your passport and so on. And then the airplane will fly and tour to all the other islands uh, around the main Taiwan island so that people can see from, from top. 
uh, and then, but of course you cannot land because otherwise uh, if you land outside of the Taiwan jurisdiction, you will need a quarantine. But that counts as international travel and there are people doing that uh, as well. Uh, and so we are basically saying if you are here in Taiwan uh, for tourism, uh, we advise you to check out our virtual tourism experiences. Our National Palace Museum, for example, have this entire online activity that you can explore the museum from afar. Uh, but now that, of course, uh, nowadays we are looking at the biological vaccine, maybe around the end of the year or the beginning of the next year. Uh, after that, we will shorten the window, of course, if you do a RT-PCR check uh, or if you do, uh, have vaccination before traveling, that will then re-enable travel. So it all depends on the availability schedule of the biological vaccine. Domestically, it's not a problem because people all use physical vaccine. Mm. That's mask, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. So let us move on to the next topic, um, society versus digital. So the traffic is a major um, issue in Okinawa in terms of the environment and the, its economy. What kind of approach or countermeasure, countermeasures does Taiwan take to take these um, issues? Yeah, in Taiwan, we say broadband is a human right. And we say uh, the more remote, the more advanced it should be. So actually, the first telemedicine, telehealth services was developed in the uh, Orchid Island or Lan Yu. Uh, that's a small island uh, close to Taiwan. Uh, and because for them, uh, the air travel is not very reliable because of weather and typhoon and so on, uh, sometimes it's very difficult uh, for people to travel through a helicopter if they need medical help and so on. And so for the health and education, that's the two parts in the Taiwanese society that we think are not capitalistic that we think the state need to take care of people with lesser resources and opportunities and are more remote from the major research hospitals. So each research hospital need to take care of at least one remote place and use telemedicine to bridge those two together so the nurse and the general practitioners on that remote island can at any time summon the a specialized doctor on the main Taiwan island. Maybe they do surgery together. Maybe they do prescription together. The best way about this is that the local people will trust the local practitioners more. It may be teachers, it may be nurses, it may be doctors, uh, but they will trust them more if they know they have an expert network in the main island to support them. Otherwise, they will just send their kids to the main island after they grow out of primary school or they will insist that their patients are sent via helicopters to the main island and that's not what we want to see. So when we develop the 5G, for example, when we auction for the spectrum, we make sure that the extra money that the telecoms bid for the spectrum always first go to the low resource places, the remote islands and so on, so we can have like self-driving vehicles uh, or uh, the, you know, uh, drones basically uh, that carries the uh, necessary equipment and so on so that people do not need uh, to physically move to the main island but can enjoy the same high quality education and health services. I think this is very important. It's been always uh, President Tsai Ing-wen's campaign promise four years ago and now we have realized it. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your clarifications. So um, Audrey-san, we have several elections in Okinawa. However, the poll rate has always been an issue with the um, turnout at around 20 to 30 percent as the younger generation have a limited interest in, in our government. So digital voting may take a while to solve this issue. With the population around 1.4 million people, do you think internet voting is feasible in Okinawa? If well, not, what mm -hmm. are the hurdles to make this happen? Uh -huh. Well, what's important is uh, if you vote more frequently, then the young people may be more interested. If you vote still every two or every four years, then of course the young people have more other things to do. In Taiwan, we have uh, e-petition. Anyone can start an initiative like ban the plastic straw from bubble tea, 
uh, that's a very popular initiative because we want to be circular and preserve our environment. It's actually started by a 16-year-old student. Uh, that's her civics class assignment, actually. Uh, and so even way before they are of the legal age to vote, they can already go through citizens' initiatives where the ministry have to respond here and now once they have 5,000 signatures. And because they vote on issues, not on people, these issues are more important for them because nowadays everybody uses social media like Instagram and so on. A issue is a hashtag, right? With each trending hashtag, you can start an initiative around it. But if you can only vote for people, that limits the imagination of people. So I would suggest that instead of just voting for people, try participatory budgeting, try citizens' initiative and petitioning, and respond it whenever, like every month or every quarter, instead of every year or every two years. That will improve the participation rate of young people and start very young, like 12 years old, 10 years old, why not? Thank you. So the um, population of Japan has started to decline from 2008 and expect to fall off from 100 million in 2053. Mm -hmm. The training of global human resources is the biggest challenge for Japan. Mm -hmm. So do you have any ideas how to train a competitive global workforce? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I think uh, instead of saying that one needs to uh, do the work exactly as the organization expects you to do, one needs to be a, even an internal entrepreneur or intrapreneur uh, that think of new possibilities to automate what can be automated, to optimize what's already automated, to innovate and think of services rather than products. If you can do all three while working in a large corporation, for example, you are still an entrepreneur. It's just you're using the resources instead of outside investors, you're using the resources of your inside investors and stakeholders. And this is very important because all the time, people are wasting a lot of time doing what things that machines can do anyway. Uh, and so we should focus our energy on interacting with one another on finding common values, on sharing our life experience, and preserving and advancing our common culture and our diversity also. And these are what only human beings can do because we have life experiences. But we should not, for example, spend a lot of time to commute because commuting is very robotic. Everybody behaves the same when they are commuting, right? Uh, and so that is the job of the machines uh, for self-driving vehicles, for example, uh, and not at all for human beings. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So the next question is, Okinawa is currently taking action to achieve Okinawa Type 5, Society 5.0. What methods do you recommend we take to increase the IT literacy of the residents to make this achievable? Uh, society 5 compared to Industry 4.0 means that the society is more advanced than the industry. This is very important. The society needs to lead the direction where the industry then complement. Otherwise, it will be what we call disruptive innovation, where the industry force the society to change. It's not a good idea. So society with a newer version number means that we need to think beyond literacy. Starting from last year in the Taiwan curriculum in the primary and secondary schools, we don't say literacy anymore. We don't say media literacy or data literacy and so on. We say media competence, data competence, digital competence. Because when you're saying literacy, you are a consumer of media and stories. But it, when you say competence, you are a producer of media and stories. Many young people, even if they are just 10 years old, maybe they have more Instagram followers than I do. So they are producers of media. It's very, uh, very simple, right? Because people who connect through each other, if they are digital native, they are more able to connect. And I am a digital immigrant. I encountered the internet when I was 12 years old. Uh, and so I already get the library, book, paper, whatever, telephone kind of thinking for 12 years before I encountered the internet. 
and the hashtag hyperlink and things like that. So I'm somewhere in between. But people younger than me, they are digital natives and they should lead the direction and be competent in leading the society. And we, the older generation, need to support them, not to control them. That is why we say competence rather than literacy, because the younger generation need to lead the direction for the society. Thank you. So in recent years, um, Okinawa may become a favorite spot, not for just tourists, but the business people. Do you like to see the encouragement of adopting teleworks or vacations? If so, could you give me an example like in Taiwan? Uh, personally, I have been teleworking for more than um, 20 years now, uh, and I spend my time full-time teleworking since at least 2008. Uh, and so uh, I'm a full-time teleworker. So what I'm saying is biased. Uh, I must first tell you that. Uh, I think teleworking uh, makes sure that everybody can work in a way that is self-describing meaning that uh, our uh, work products, because we don't have a lot of time for meetings, we always use our meetings very efficiently and let our work speak for themselves. Uh, this is called stand-up meetings in the Silicon Valley where I used to work. Uh, and I work in this time zone and the Silicon Valley in a different time zone. Uh, and I spend only one hour every 10 p.m. Taipei time and for them, it's early morning. They don't want to wake up earlier. I don't want to sleep later. So we only have one hour in overlap. Uh, and among which, we only spend 15 minutes for meetings and reports. And it's called stand-up meeting, because if you stand up and meet, people will speak very efficiently. Otherwise, their leg will get sore. If people sit and meet, they will meet for hours. Uh, and so I think teleworking promotes this kind of self-sufficient work and therefore it's best suited if people can take accountability and responsibility for the quality of their work. It's less suited if people do not actually find happiness and creativity in their work. If their work is very repetitive and they only do it grudgingly, uh, like not very willingly, then of course teleworking can only make them feel even more unhappy. Uh, but if it's creative work, then it's more room to create. So that has also to do with restructuring work. So the part that are not creative are automated and only the creative parts are done by humans. In that case, teleworking is great. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, many countries have been impressed by Taiwan that develop digital maps that provide information about face mask um, availability. Could you give us an example of other IT-related actions that the Taiwanese government plans to carry out? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I think the most important part that I want to share with you, uh, and I specifically checked for the screen sharing because I want to share with you the cute dog. And this is called humor over rumor. Uh, all our signs from the public health experts are translated into this cute dog meme. If I tell you wear a mask to protect yourself from your own unwashed hands, you may or may not remember that. But when a cute dog tells you this, not only you will remember, you will also share it. When I tell you that you have to keep one meter away from each other outdoor and one and a half meter indoor, you will forget about it the very next day. But when the cute dog tells you to keep three Shiba Inu away uh, when you're indoor and two Shiba Inu when um, outdoors, you will remember that immediately and you will also share it. Um, and so the important thing here is that don't let the conspiracy theories, don't let the divisiveness, don't let the toxic environment take over the social media and make it become anti-social media. If we respond quickly enough with humor, then the pro-social part of humanity, fun, humor, sharing, and so on, takes over. And it's a vaccine. Because if you have left, I hear you laugh about the social distancing. So you are immune against any conspiracy theory now about social distancing because you have left about it. Uh, and so making sure that we have communication 
experts that can roll out very funny memes and hashtags in two hours whenever a conspiracy theory or a rumor goes out. This is very important, and I would argue is the even more important uh, than a very long press release that gets all the signs right, because very few people will read that press release, but many people will remember the cute dog. Thank you. So Audrey-san, we carry out a questionnaire from local university students for you. So I would appreciate if you could answer to the following questions. So um, many young people to this day are living where they were born and never wanting to go abroad to experience a whole new world. What motivated you to go to US when you were at the age of 14? Well, first of all, because I already had friends there. Um, the internet enabled me to make friends everywhere around the world. We are fellows in the open source movement, uh, at that time still called the free software movement when I first joined. Uh, and then, because I have friends all over the world, I went couch surfing. Couch surfing means that I just go to a random place and I expect I will meet my friend who I have known for years on the internet. We maybe make software together, maybe make poetry together. And I would just stay at their sofa uh, for maybe a week or so until they get fed up with me uh, and tell me you need to go somewhere else. Uh, and I will ask uh, well, what's the nearest rail railroad station. Uh, and in this couch surfing way, I traveled more than 20 cities when I was in my early 20s. Uh, go to all the different uh, cities and all the different continents and so on, from Tel Aviv uh, to Austria, of course the United States uh, in both coasts, but also Canada and Australia and so on. And so because of that, I see that the internet has its own kinship, that we already feel that we are uh, linked together. It's just that we visit each other in our uh, carbon body, but our silicon body have already uh, made a tribe together. And so if you make such international friends, of course it makes it easier for they to visit you or for you to visit them. And of course virtual reality still helps a lot, especially during the COVID, so you know exactly who they are and you will not uh, think that it's a fearsome, dangerous place or whatever, and you wouldn't think, oh, my English is not so good, my punctuation and grammar are imperfect, because you will know, actually, all around the world, people don't care <laughs> if you smile and nod and point. Uh, people will be friendly to you anyway if they already know you online. Thank you. So, um, another question from uh, students. So, English is obviously not the first language for both Taiwan and Japan. What do you think English as a second language should be mean to children of Taiwanese and Japanese in terms of education and personal skills? I learned English very late. I learned it when I was 15 years old. Uh, and it's not a problem for me because I was uh, very uh, intensively interested in a game called Magic the Gathering. Uh, it's a collective uh, collectible card game that's still around actually and later on become an online game as well. Uh, my first uh, visit to Tokyo is actually to compete in the Asia Pacific Championship of Magic the Gathering uh, which I won uh, the top eight uh, place. Uh, but in any case, uh, because the cards at that time was not translated or uh, to the Taiwanese Mandarin characters uh, to kanji uh, and so I have to learn English. And so the first English words that I learned are very hard words because in that game, a simple idea like counter spell is spelled very, very differently. Like uh, they can call it um, like dissipate uh, or annulation uh, or abeyance. Uh, these are like GRE level, very difficult words, uh, but because they're part of a game, I learned about it anyway. Uh, and so just find something that you're interested in. Nowadays, maybe not Magic the Gathering, but maybe uh, Pokemon Go, right? <laughs> and, and many other things, right? So people learn Japanese um, sometimes because they want, want to watch, um, in my generation, Doraemon or uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion uh, 
or goes in the shell uh, in its original language. And the same uh, goes for English uh, works as well. So uh, I think this is called content-oriented learning. If you have something you're very interested in, you'll be motivated to learn everything about that particular domain. And the language barrier is not a problem for you. And there are many communities like Duolingo nowadays that will help you to find people with similar interests in similar languages. And so just make sure that it's fun. Again, in uh, digital social innovation, fun is the most important motivator for learning a second language. Uh, that also includes JavaScript, by the way. Yes, definitely. Many people show the SDGs as a pyramid with the smaller number on the bottom and the higher number on top. It's not like that in my mind. In my mind, the SDGs is three circles. It's a Venn diagram uh, with the economic, social, and environmental concerns. But digital, it's very special because it's in the middle. It's where the three areas previously may be fighting against each other. But now, thanks to digital technology, they can be accountable to each other and make sure that, for example, when we develop circular economy, the environmental sector can say, oh, I measure your carbon emission. And then the economic sector can say, oh, by the way, we can do the carbon trade tax financial technology design. With digital technology, this become possible. Without digital technology, very, very difficult. Uh, and so my particular work as the digital minister is actually described in three SDG uh, targets. It's about making sure there's reliable data across sectors through like distributed ledgers and so on. And it's also encouraging effective partnerships across sectors that previously don't trust each other. You can build trust using digital technologies, like as I mentioned, distributed ledgers. Like in the pharmacies, if you queue up to buy medical masks, the people queuing behind you can check their phone and make sure that when you buy nine medical masks every two weeks, it actually the mask availability reduced by nine after your purchase right away, right? It's called open API. And it makes sure people trust each other much more easily than if they have to blindly trust the government. And finally, it's about open innovation. We willingly share the Taiwan model, including the cute dog um, with the Japanese people. And we also share the mask availability map with young Korean civic technologists. I met some of them uh, through video conference a few weeks ago. Some of them was just like 13, 14 years old, but they take Taiwan's mass availability map we developed in February and starting at March or early April, they have successfully replicated in the South Korea. And I think this is a great way to describe digital knowledge sharing easier, of course, than any other physical products to be shared among the nations. Okay, so uh, let me move on to technology side a little bit. So the performance of VR has improved dramatically in recent years. Please tell us if you have any expectation for new development using VR industry. Yes, as I mentioned previously, VR is uh, heavily linked to a fiber optic line. It only works if there is a fiber optic line. Uh, that is to say, if there is a stable Wi-Fi to a stable Ethernet connection to a stable fiber optic. Otherwise, it's not a very good experience. Uh, but now, with 5G, that change because 5G is low latency. Unlike 4G, where once you nod a little bit, it takes me half a second to see you nodding, and we don't feel we're in the same room anymore. Nowadays, with 5G, once you nod, I can feel you nodding immediately. We even tried having people who are playing guitar and sing on one side of Taiwan, and people who play bass and play the keyboard on the other side of Taiwan, uh, and in outdoor places, and one in indoor place, and they can still jam together, thanks 
thanks to the low latency of the 5G. And so I think VR enables a social shared reality only with 5G technology, with the outdoors. Previously, it was a solo experience or it was indoor, and that limits the uh, VR imagination. And nowadays, we call this 5G outdoor social experience, XR. That's what I mentioned, XR space. Thank you. So let's get back to the education. Um, the poverty is a social issue in Okinawa. Like children have unlimited growth potential, but the fam family economic situation may hinder their potential because they are unable to access to the right education. How should adults support their children to maximize their growth potential? Well, first of all, um, the children can watch the JCI Japan YouTube uh, live streaming. <laughs> Uh, and this is not, uh, I'm not uh, making a joke, I'm very serious. In Taiwan, we have people in very good universities who serve as digital companions who, to people who are uh, in the more remote areas, but through internet and broadband as human rights. The more senior students show what a possible world there is, what opportunity there is through the digital space, introduce the younger people in the more remote communities into a wider co-creative community. And so they have both their parents' links to their local society, but they also have the digital and creative competence to turn this cultural experience into something larger that will inspire the world, uh, and so become creatives that are still linked to their community, right? So I think this link, both local and global, this global setting, very important. So more people who make sure that there is such a link the more that it will be that the people will see the local culture, not something that is dwindling with the aging population, but actually thriving with the digital world. Thank you. Um, another question. Um, some EU countries are opposed to American giants, GAFA, for their data corrections. How do you think that we should handle these vast amounts of personal information? I am very biased because before being a digital minister, I worked with Apple for six years. Uh, and uh, my experience tells me that Apple is not like the other three in the GAFA, because in Apple, um, the uh, sales is about the device. Uh, and once Apple earned already a lot of money from the device, Apple doesn't want to earn more money from advertisement. And if we don't earn from advertisement, there is no incentive for Apple to exploit your data for selling advertisement. Of course, I can only speak to the Apple that I worked with, uh, which stopped in uh, 2016, right? Uh, I don't know what they are doing for the next four years uh, up until now, uh, but I would still say that Apple's uh, uh, revenue model is still primarily not supported by advertisement and that's not the same with say Facebook uh, and Google. So I will say that GAFA cannot be seen as one single thing. There are different norms. There are people who support, for example, uh, the self-determination right for your data like the GDPR is a Europe um, law that makes sure that at any time you can take the data from one vendor to another. You can download all your data and there's a lot of restrictions uh, for all the uninformed use of your data. And I think this is really, really good. And Taiwan is seeking GDPR adequacy exactly the same as Japan is doing. So in Asia, I think Japan and Taiwan are most close to European Union when it comes to GDPR. Uh, and I think, um, speaking not for Apple now, because I no longer work with Apple, but I think the more value that people put in the trust of a long-term brand relationship, the less likely they will get exploited by advertisers. And the more the revenue model depends on advertisement, then of course they will resist the GDPR because their users are not their customers. 
uh, the right of the customers are the right of the advertisers because the advertisers are their customers. Uh, and so we really need to find better revenue models. I'm not saying Apple is the only one revenue model, but we can surely find more revenue models, for example, through cooperatives, through social sector innovations, and so on. Thank you. So um, both Taiwan and Okinawa are surrounded by oceans. Do you have any thoughts on the economic strength and weakness of these islands? Please let, yeah. let us know. I think uh, because we are islands, we make sure that when we think uh, globally, we're not restricted by a boundary. Because if we are restricted by a boundary, then it's much too small, right? Uh, and so uh, I think on the internet, if you uh, type Okinawa, the list of things written about Okinawa as compared to the land area of the Okinawa and its islands, it's a much higher ratio. So Okinawa is larger on the digital world uh, proportionally than uh, its area in the geological sense. And the same also goes for Taiwan. Uh, and so uh, for us, branding, is much more important. Uh, this idea of working with the whole world, not just uh, with people within our continent or within our landmass, that is paramount, that is very important. And we also, of course, uh, think hyperlink, right? Just as the ancient Polynesian navigators look at stars and they see hyperlink between the islands, that's how they do their wayfinding. We also do our wayfinding by linking together people with similar values. Uh, for example, there, before the COVID, there was a hackathon called Facing the Ocean, or FTO, started by people in the GovZero community in Taiwan, and also Code for Japan in the main Japan uh, territory, and, but also from South Korea, and also from Hong Kong. So anyone who care about uh, civic rights can join in Okinawa, and Okinawa is chosen because it is transcultural. We can find some of our culture here, and it's equal distance, so uh, it's actually where the main action is. Just as I said, in Taiwan we have a lot of transcultural uh, instinct because as part of uh, an island in an ocean, we get those plates running together all the time and earthquakes too. So we are all very resilient and our mountain, the Yushan, the Jade Mountain, rise every year two and a half centimeters because of this earthquake. So instead of choosing between the left wing or the right wing or something, we think up wing that whenever there is a cultural clash, we can innovate and make a new solution that take care of the common values in a sustainable fashion. And so this is something I think is particularly good in the island culture and that we share, of course, with Okinawa and Japan as well. Thank you. So the next question, the distal divide between districts and generations may lead to economic disparity. What shall we do to solve um, we need to bring technology to people instead of asking people to adapt to technology. So, as I said, industry 4.0, but society 5.0. 4.0 should upgrade to 5. We should not ask 5 to downgrade to 4. Uh, and this is very important. When we introduce the mask availability, everyone can use their national health insurance card which covers more than 99.9% .9 of not only citizens but also residents as well. So if you're a Japanese, it just happens you work in Taiwan uh, for more than half a year, you also have universal health coverage. And because of that, you have an IC card. And if you are very elderly, you just go to your nearby convenience store, like 7-Eleven or Family Mart uh, or uh, High Life or OK Mart, uh, and then a very friendly um, person will help you to insert the health insurance card to the kiosk, where you can then use to pre-order the mask and pay in cash. So this is just like the uh, Chademo charging station. Uh, many people don't know how to use that charging station, but because it's next to a convenience store, uh, there's very helpful staff that will help you to adapt uh, that technology to your need, not asking you to adapt to the technology's need. So someone trusted 
by the community. It could be a convenience store, a supermarket, or a pharmacy, uh, or a school, but someone acting as a mediator, or a librarian, a public library, somebody act as a mediator between technology and the people, and always show you can change the technology, adapt it appropriately to fit your needs. But it's your needs that drives the technology. This mediator, the direction is facing toward the society. This is very important. Hi, uh, Okinawa Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there are two ways uh, that digital can help. In Taiwan, for example, in some uh, more rural areas that depends primarily on tourism, there are large swaths of land, but there's no sufficient people who can farm those lands. Nowadays, they are using digital technology like uh, drones, self-driving uh, vehicles, basically, uh, to not only to do uh, the taking care of the plants, for example, on spraying the necessary uh, nutri nutrients uh, and monitoring the growth and so on, but actually robots to take care of harvesting and things like that. And so just one farmer can take care of a very large land while making most of their time working on tourism, uh, that is to say, branding uh, and telling the story of the land while the robots do the actual farming work. Uh, and this is uh, how we try to make sure that even in a declining population, the young people still are willing to go back to where they grew up because they can program those self-driving robots uh, that works on the farm. They don't have to physically work on the farm. Uh, and this is, of course, require digital competency. Uh, and then they spend most of their time then maybe becoming a YouTuber or sharing Instagram stories uh, about their local culture. And this is, of course, really good. Uh, and that's the second way digital can help. It enables you to become a better storyteller that can tell the story not only to people speaking Japanese or Mandarin or English, but actually across all the different cultures and find the commonalities. Of course, uh, Okinawa is not the only place facing such a issue in the world. There are many p places in Europe, in Africa, in the Americans facing the same issue. I attended a virtual island summit where each island sent a representative. So Taiwan sends me, uh, and the Penghu Pescador Island also sends somebody else. And it's entirely virtual, so there's no carbon emission. Uh, and we found out that we actually share many uh, common concerns uh, with, the, for example, East Caribbean islands and so on. Uh, and so build a coalition among the islands working on the same issues. That would also strengthen our community and also share best practices. So that that's in addition to the robot and automation, also build digital community. え、オドレさん、今日はもう本当にたくさんの質問にお答えていただきましてありがとうございました。Thank you. え、交流を続けていきたいと思ってます。で、その上で、20代、30代が多い、え、このメンバー、若いメンバーに対して、JCI のですね、オドリさんからま、エールというか一言最後にいただけたいと思います。よろしくお願いします。Yes, you are the first generation of digital natives. You are the generation that I was referring to. You are the direction of the future of your society. Um, my favorite saying from Buckminster Fuller says, and I quote, when you see an old system you don't like it, don't fight with it. Build a new system that will make the old system obsolete. And this will be my main suggestion. Build a new way of coming together and building a culture of collaboration and sustainability. If people still 
in the older generation believe in linear growth, believe in negative externalities to the society and environment, don't spend time fighting with them. Just prove to them that circular economy is better. Just prove to them that this global community can attract more friends uh, than this vertical supply chain. And the elderly will one day see the wisdom of the young people and then support the young people. This is what happened in Taiwan, and I sincerely hope that it happens in Okinawa throughout the next few years. え、それでは今日はもう大変お忙しい中、オードリーさんにえ、参加をいただいて、もうたくさんの質問をしてしまいましたけども、大変な学びとなりました。え、これでお時間ということですので、え、オードリーさんをえ、これで見送りたいと思